is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I hope you all are going to enjoy this episode because I really am. Now, a lot of you have asked us about composting in the past. We've done a ton of videos on composting, but one question that constantly comes up is, Luke, how do I fix a carbon to nitrogen imbalance? It's, very, it's a very simple solution, but it is a very common question. So I thought I'd talk about that because we do have a tiny bit of a nitrogen to carbon imbalance going on here in our compost pile. So in the fall, this is typically when this happens. During the main growing season when you're getting lots of food scraps, grass clippings, a lot of stuff like that that's nice green material, typically nitrogen is in a surplus and you actually have to kind of go finding some, some carbon sources, whether it's shredded leaves or uh, shredded newspapers, things like that. Usually not as difficult to, to find that balance so you have good composting. However, in the fall, as we get closer to the fall, you get a lot more dead grass from stress. You get a lot more uh, leaves falling from the trees. Those are, are very high in carbon, but not very high in nitrogen. And often what happens is the compost pile, we start a new compost pile. We have the finished one over on the other side. We have this beautiful, huge compost pile here. It often uh, goes a little bit slower than it would during the main season, or it might not compost hot whatsoever because there's too much carbon. You see, the bacteria found in the compost pile utilize nitrogen to actually begin the composting process. That's why if you have wood chips on your soil or a mulch and you accidentally turn that into your soil, usually you have a nitrogen deficiency after a little bit because the nitrogen in the soil is actually being utilized by the bacteria to break down that organic matter. Now the flip side is that once the matter is broken down, there's usually nitrogen given back to the soil after the process, but it's held up temporarily in a process called nitrogen sequestration. So what's happening is essentially there's nitrogen sequestration going on inside our compost pile and the compost cannot reach its maximum potential because there's not enough nitrogen. Now the first thing you'll notice is that maybe your compost pile, even though it's this high, three foot by three foot by three foot, nine, uh, or sorry, um, <laughs> 27 cubic feet, um, 27 cubic feet of of organic matter and you're not reaching that 130, 140 degree mark where it's really heating up, it's really getting hot and it's composting quickly. Another thing is it might be turning anaerobic. It might not be uh, breaking down at all. It might just kind of be turning sludgy. That's another thing to consider. Um, maybe you don't, that's, that really helps with the nitrogen. It kind of helps keep that, that uh, oxygenation, that, that um, aerobic life going on in your compost pile, that's another thing to look for. It's kind of getting a little methane-y. It's kind of not uh, smelling as um, as organic. It's smelling a little more like a manure. Um, those are some things to look for, and how we fix that is just by adding a little bit of nitrogen. So what is the best form of nitrogen? Well, that's up to you to decide because it's so whatever is my best it might not be your best. So I'm gonna give you the reason, or my best source of nitrogen, but you can use things like green grass clippings, animal manures like chicken, cow, as long as they're a really high in nitrogen um, manure that is free of, of weed seeds and, and stuff like that that you probably would not wanna put um, in your compost pile, unless of course you're heating it up real hot. That's another thing is if you're heating it up real hot, you're killing a lot of those weed seeds, so you can use um, a little more uh, impure manures like cow or horse. Um, chicken manure is great because a lot of those seeds are, are digested and it's very high in nitrogen. Um, other ones are things like rabbits. Those are great manures. Alpaca, uh, things like that are, are very clean, um, just high nitrogen manures. But also if you're using things um, like, uh, like what I'm going to be using, which are coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are an awesome source of nitrogen to get your compost pile up and going um, and you can get it for free. Um, another source of nitrogen that I've used in the past that works great only it can cost some money is blood meal. Blood meal is a byproduct of the cattle industry and it's simply just a waste product that is instead a very good organic source of nitrogen um, and that can be used as well. So Again, my best might not be your best. So kind of figure out what you have most readily accessible uh, and also what is the cheapest. Don't make it expensive, folks, when you're trying to get your compost pile going again, when you're trying to fix that nitrogen carbon ratio. 
Ideally, what you wanna look for is a right around a carbon to nitrogen ratio of three parts carbon to five parts nitrogen. Um, and that's a, a great that's a great ratio. It's kind of what we call the golden ratio for composting. And uh, and so all we're going to do here is we're just going to fix that with a little bit of comp uh, a little bit of coffee grounds uh, by putting those into our compost pile. All right, so it's getting dark here, but I want to get this video out because I think this is going to help a lot of people. So what these bags are are actually uh, coffee ground bags given to us by Starbucks. Now, if you have a local um, a local coffee shop, they go through tons of these, and these are free. All you have to do is just pick them up. Look at this. Check that out. See right there? Free. I love free. So these are bags of coffee grounds that they fill up, um, and you can just pick them up at the end of the day. It's called Grounds for Gardens. They're at most participating uh, Starbucks stores. I haven't walked into one where I have not yet seen these, so you can find them around if you got a Starbucks. But also, just check out your local, you know, Tim Hortons, or check out your local, uh, just even your local small mom and pop coffee shop um, that is, you know, that is um, doing coffee, and they'll have it. Another thing that's great is tea bags. Tea bags are often uh, used in those same type of uh, stores, and they'll often throw those in there as well. So these are beautiful. They're uh, they're actually kind of warm still, which is just, it's awesome. But look how nice that is. Not only is this going to add nitrogen in beautiful amounts, but it's also going to add organic matter, which is going to help your soil structure over time. So it's a win-win situation. So all we're going to do, seriously folks, it's this simple. All we're going to do is simply dump it onto the compost pile and just simply work it in a little bit to incorporate the coffee grounds in. It also helps if you water it in well, because that way the nitrogen uh, leaches down into the compost and it really helps the whole pile start heating up nice and evenly. That's one. Here's two. And one more. Three. Really get the water in there too. That water definitely helps the composting process. All right, so that just about does it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. I really do hope that you're composting. It is a great way to decrease your costs in the garden and give your plants free fertilizer. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And also, uh, I know it's gonna come up in the comment section. What about coffee grounds or tea that has, uh, that has been um, infused with uh, perfumes or you know some type of aroma, whether it's pumpkin spice or cinnamon or vanilla or whatever. If you're using those, try to stay away from them. Um, generally, more often than not, uh, those are only found in home grounds. Any type of uh, any type of flavoring that's been used in coffee grounds is is uh, usually only done from stuff you buy at the store. If you go to like a Starbucks or your local uh, coffee shop, they're using just straight ground Arabica coffee beans because the other flavorings are used in syrups. Those are syrups that they add after the coffee's been brewed. So the coffee grounds you're adding are pure and totally free of any synthetic uh, chemicals or, or you know, potpourris or you know, natural flavorings, whatever they call them. I just typically keep them out of my garden because they're usually not a, a naturally found ingredient that's being put into the coffee. It's usually uh, an, an essence of whatever it is, an essence of cinnamon or an essence of caramel. Um, and those are through chemical compounds being added and infused into the coffee itself. So um, <laughs> just something to consider. Uh, keep those out of your garden, but other than that, you're totally fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, it's getting dark, so I got to go. But I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. We'll catch you all on the next episode. All right. Bye.